Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and today we are going to be talking about how much lateral force is required when we are going through a corner. Uh, depending on the radius of the turn, the lateral force required at the front and the rear wheels kind of vary. So we are going to talk about it, how to find uh, the maximum value of lateral force required. Uh, and depending on that, we can choose our tires and suspension setup and everything. So this is this just gives a basic idea of like, you know, if we know the track, like what the shape of the track is and how many hairpins are there and what is the steepest or the most curviest turn. So depending on those factors, we can uh, calculate the amount of lateral force required to maneuver maximum amount of lateral force required on a certain track at a certain turn. So this equation is for that and for this we are going to be assuming a bicycle model that is we are combining the front two tires into one and rear two tires into one and this is the bicycle model. First we need to take care of the assumptions. Uh, so here we are not talking about the lateral load transfer between left and right tires as we can see we have combined the front two tires into one and rear two tires into one. Also at the same time there is one another assumption that we are considering that the track is the entire track it has one surface level like it's not like of varying elevations at any point right like you know like if for Au Rouge for example it's not going like this. So we are considering a flat track where at every point it's the same distance from the sea level. Okay, so let's get started. So this is our bicycle model. These are the front tire, this is the rear tire, this is center of gravity. Uh, the, so the lateral force generated at the front tire is FYF. Lateral force generated at rear tire is FYR. The center of gravity is distributed. Distribution of center of gravity from the center point of the front wheel is A and from rear wheel is B. It's going at a, v, a speed of V kilometers per hour. It has a mass of m kgs and it's going through this turn with a radius of r. Like whenever we have a turn, obviously it's not going to be a perfect circle, but we can assume the curviest part or the curved part where we have to maneuver it, what radius of that circle would be as per our racing line, of course. So depending on that, like r as the radius of turn. So think about it if this car is making a turn and it's not spinning about the, about the center of gravity as the pivot that means the lateral the moment from the lateral force generated at front tires and lateral force generated at rear tires should be the same and it should cancel out each other that is lateral force at the front times a this is this will be the turning effect of front lateral force about the cg and it should be equal to the lateral force times b like distance from the center of gravity to the center point of the rear wheel. So these two four, uh, moments should be equal and cancel out. So there is no spinning about uh, of the car about its center of gravity. So if we rearrange the equation, we'll get something like this, where lateral force in front equals to lateral force in the rear times B by A. B by A is nothing but the distribution of the center of gravity about its wheel base. So whenever we are making the turn, uh, centripetal force acts on a body whenever we are making a turn to which keeps it in that particular curvature. Formula for that is mv square by r. We already know m is the mass of the vehicle, v is the velocity of the vehicle by which it's making that particular turn, r is the radius of that turn. And this centripetal force will be countered by the lateral force generated on the front and the rear tires. So the combination of this FIF plus FIR, but we know FIF is equals to FIR times B by A. So if we use this equation, we'll get FIR times one plus B by A. Rearranging, we get it L over A. L is the wheelbase of the bicycle model we are considering over here equals to v by r further rearranging gives us fir is equals to mv square by r a by l now we need to understand the sense of this equation a over l a is the distribution or distance or uh, distribution of center of gravity or distance of the center of gravity from the front like center point of the front tire so think about it if it's a front engine car then a will be smaller center of gravity will be up higher b will be larger center of gravity will be further away from the rear tire 
So this will be a smaller value. The A by L ratio would be smaller. M is the mass of the vehicle, which is like, you know, physical characteristic of the vehicle, which is not going to change at any point when we are making a turn. Velocity, obviously, we want to go at the fastest speed possible for uh, making that turn. R is the radius of the turn, which is, again, it's a track and whatever racing line it would be, depending on the curvature of the turn, it's not going to change. We want to follow that perfect racing line, right? So that's also going to remain constant theoretically and lateral force on the rear. So now if you look at it, mass of the entire vehicle times this. This is nothing but distribution of M times this thing. A over L is of M on rear axle. This is the distribution of mass on the rear axle because this is the smaller value and this is the amount of weight which is amount of weight or the mass which is loaded on the rear tire so this is the amount of mass that needs to be countered by this lateral force on the rear tire so if we have a front engine car we'll have more weight in the front therefore we will require more lateral force from the front tires to balance out that weight when turning at this particular speed and the radius of the turn and lesser the weight we will need less amount of lateral force so this thing again we need to understand this thing this is the lateral force requirement when we are maneuvering through a particular turn this does not give us the lateral force that is generated at our tire lateral force generated at our tire will be given to us from tire data by the tire manufacturers and that's how we find like okay what is the tire characteristic and at what sip angle how much amount of lateral force is generated so this just gives the requirement for a particular turn and a particular speed that we need to have this much amount of lateral force at the rear tire and front tire also for this equation if you try to make sense it's the ratio between uh, the distribution of the center of gravity about the wheelbase and if it's not mutually equal then if think about it if this torque fif times a is not equals to fir times b think about it as just suppose for example if this uh, this value is higher b is greater than a and also the lateral force acting on the rear wheels is higher that means the torque uh, acting on the rear wheels will be higher and then the vehicle will oversteer so that's not happening we are assuming that our car is going through the turn properly in a neutral steer condition then this ratio will hold up and this is how we are assuming this equation i hope you understood this concept and please let me know if you have co uh, comments uh, in the comment section below any comments or questions and i'll see you all in the next video and please post any youtube video ideas any new topics you want me to cover in the next video and i'll be happy to help you out and i'll see you guys all in the next video see ya